Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Tuesday edition of Today in Sports Betting. We're going to do it as we always do, start a little uh, NBA style, Scotty. You excited? Yep. Uh, I know yesterday, I can't say that my play worked out that well. Uh, the Celtics, who had a couple of last minute uh, injury news to keep in mind, uh, Jalen Brown played like I thought he would, but Kemba's out, which, you know, he had 26 over the weekend, whatever. And then about three in the afternoon, Marcus Smart randomly gets added to the injury report and he doesn't play. So classic NBA injury report stuff, man. Well, and I had the Grizzlies to take care of business getting six and a half. Never in doubt. Jeez. Double overtime. Double, double overtime sweat. Dodgers just lost, Scott. That's, that's become final. Okay. Nice. Congrats Couple to the Mariners. Couple of big doggies today. You know, you and I were talking about that on the radio show about how the underdogs, if you take out the Dodgers, the underdogs are actually over 500. Yep. And I know you mentioned the Rangers. I mentioned the Brewers and they both did well. Yep. Yep. I just, I just don't ever see laying 220, 240 on the Los Angeles Angels. Sorry. Yeah. But the, with the Rangers had a competent pitcher. So. Mm -hmm. At least yeah. we got enough runs. So, yeah, not a, not a horrible day all in all. We, uh, yeah, we, we lost on our, our uh, Bet the Farm on our radio show. We had the. Happens. Yeah, we, we had Joe. We, 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 we backed Joe Ross, basically. To, uh, we had the first five under. And, yeah, Ross was, blew. Oh, Ross was, uh, did he face him the first time? Right? Was, this was the second time he faced him, I thought, right? Yeah. It's a classic. Uh, killed them the first time and then get killed by them the second time. Happens. It yep. absolutely happens. happens. So, kind of got a short card here to, to uh, tonight, Scott. First game going to be that TV game. What should be should be kind of fun. We, of course, we don't uh, have a total on. You got a total yet, Scott? It's the Brooklyn Nets and the Pelicans, by the way. Pelicans uh, minus a deuce is what I have right now. I don't see a number. I'm going to guess that's. <laughs> 236 something like that i was gonna say 237 so yeah it sounds about right okay um scott what's up with this number shouldn't the aren't the nets supposed to be like a good team well if you keep in mind all the injury news and some of the covid protocol stuff that happened over the last couple of days i'm not fully surprised that the pelicans are favored uh, pelicans of course lost in overtime to the knicks but there is no travel involved because they're already in new york now, you look at the Nets, of course, Durant got injured again. So he's going to be out again, probably indefinitely. Uh, Harden's still out. Should be back at some point, either this week or next week. But he's still not playing. Kyrie's still playing, though. He's been playing pretty well. Killed the Nets down the stretch against Miami. But you look at the rest of this team, and, of course, the Pelicans, the one thing they do have is a lot of size on the interior uh, with uh, Steven Adams, Jackson Hayes, of course, Zion. And the Nets, it older you retired. And now you are without Claxton and Perry, who both are in now in the COVID protocol, which means that your entire big man rotation is DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin. That's it. And you're facing off against a team that pretty much only scores in the paint. So I'm not surprised that the Pelicans are favored here. I think they make an argument that Zion can go for 35, and I wouldn't give you an argument at all uh, because – Zion is, of course, a phenomenal player, and the Nets should have no one to guard him. So if you want to talk about who I think is going to win this game, the Nets killed this team the first time they played. I know Durant didn't end up playing. Kyrie went nuts. The Pelicans couldn't stop anybody. But I just have to assume that the Pelicans are going to get so many free layups at the rim. I'm going to go with the Pelicans in this one. It seems like a line where they're daring you to take the Nets, and with all the injuries and the short roster, I think New Orleans gets back on track. Okay, you, you know they didn't look great against the net the, against the Knicks, but that's a very very different kind of team. This that's the thing though; is they didn't look great, but they were still up three with seven seconds left. Yeah, I, mean, I know. That's, so they just they just couldn't they just couldn't put them away. They they, they classic. They played well enough to win, except they didn't. Correct, which is the Pelican staple of the season. But I just can't get past the lack of big men for Brooklyn, and we saw how bad DeAndre Jordan was earlier in the year. And now there's a reason why they brought in Aldridge so Jordan could never play. Right. Now that he's back and he's the active contributor is probably going to play, I don't know, what do you think, 25, like 20 to 30 minutes in this game? He's going to have to. I mean, 
obviously they can go small, but I just don't see how that matches up well with this Pelicans team. But the point is that Jordan's numbers efficiency-wise are atrocious when he's on and off the court. The Nets are so much better when he's not on the court. So I think the Nets – I don't, I don't want to say they're going to have a no-show, but I think New Orleans should end up winning this game. Okay. All right. You know, I don't I – don't, I hate taking New Orleans on the road against the Nets, but – it's just I think the injuries are finally going to catch up with this team. I'm well, actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I misspoke. I said on the road that the game's actually in New Orleans. Oh, is, oh they, you're right. That's my bad. I, I, thought, I thought there was no travel because they were in MSG playing in Brooklyn, but now they're playing in New Orleans. That would make too much sense. Yeah, my bad. Oh, no, I, I, I saw the same thing. I, you know, I was – Well, I misspoke earlier, so my bad. No, they, put, they should put a little at symbol there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I like this game. I like it, I like it more with the Pelicans at home. Well, they're 16 and 14 at home, seven games under 500 overall. So, pretty yeah. decent home road splits. Yeah, they're, they're they're acceptable at home and terrible on the road. So, yep. All right, I'll play that. Um, other TV game, and I know you've got a play of the day on this. Yep. It's uh, going to be, again, another game that should be kind of fun. It's going to be the Clippers in Portland. But, Scott, there's a big piece of news that makes this pretty easy to play in my in my opinion because it's it's clippers by eight and you think man that seems like a lot of like a lot of points on the road portland they can score portland's got a little problem scott what is it oh they can't guard a soul yeah that's well that's not the problem scott what's the other problem uh damian lillard's also out that's the problem that's the problem because well, I, well, I'm just saying because before we brought up the Lord injury, I'm just going to throw it out that these teams have already played twice this season, and the Lord has played. The Clippers won each of those games by at least 17 points, so uh, you can make an argument that the bigger issue is the defense because even when Lord was there, they they got killed by the Clippers twice. They're due. They're due without their best player for a rise up moment. Uh he yeah, has a play that it for a reason. I got a feeling the Clippers will be probably the I don't want to say the biggest public bet, but probably close to it. But you look at Portland, and this team lost to the Celtics in a close one. Lillard played in that one. Barely beat San Antonio on the road by one, and then got absolutely smacked by an injured Charlotte team on the road, which we talked about in yesterday's show, down 20 after the first quarter. They were favored by, I think it was four and a half or something, and they got killed outright. But the Clippers, we've talked about this team for the last couple of weeks. This team is just surging, and they lost the one game to Philly. Kawhi didn't play, so I'm not going to overreact to it. But you look at the other teams that they've played and how Kawhi and Paul George are finally healthy together again. Yeah. It feels like it never happens. Don't just assume the Clippers roll here. I think you have to. This is a Portland team. They don't play particularly well at home, Scott. They're just 11-17 against the number at home. And they don't play very well against teams with winning records. They're six and fourteen on the year against teams with winning records, and they're zero and six in the second half of the season against plus five hundred teams. So, I mean, you know that I've been anti Port one for a while. You, you don't even like you don't even like Portlandia the show. That's that's how much it, that's how bad it is. Mm-hmm. But I respect Lillard. I know McCollum's also a good player, but. I don't know how many years you can throw out the same group of guys and nobody can play defense and you expect this team to actually be competitive. Well, one more at least. At least I guess. One. But, you know, they're going to keep running stocks. They're going to keep throwing Cantor in there to play meaningful minutes, even though he can't guard a pick and roll to save his life. And I don't think Nurkic can guard a pick and roll either. So don't you just think the Clippers are just going to go pick and roll and Kawhi's going to have a field day or Paul George is going to have a field day against whichever big man switched on to him? Yeah, I mean, this is a Portland team that's played better defense lately. Yeah, they, but they also have played some. They played some weak offenses. Though. That's the problem. They haven't played good defense against a good offensive team. So the only the only team they played with the pulse was the was the Celtics and the and Utah, and Celtics put up one sixteen. Utah put up one twenty two. So in both meetings and, this season, the Clippers scored at least one hundred and twenty eight. And like you mentioned, yeah, the Clippers put up put up a buck thirty three the last time they played them. So. There's just not to like. No, there's just not much to like about Portland in this spot. So you take your pick. They're bad yeah. home team, bad team against the good teams. Uh, Damian Lillard's out, and their defense is awful. So unless McCollum goes for like forty, or Cantor has another twenty and thirty game, which I just don't see happening. 
I don't want to say that they're guaranteed to get put behind the woodshed, but it looks like this game should become rather ugly early on, especially with how the Clippers have played lately. Agreed. So, Scott, just a couple more games on the card. Anything anything gets you excited? On the surface, it would appear that Atlanta Hawks game, uh, Atlanta's favored by 12. Yeah, I know Orlando's terrible. Atlanta's played good ball lately. Um, if I was going to play it, I'd lay with Atlanta. I know that's not a I, – I can say a controversial take, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to take Atlanta, but, you know, this team's been good. Orlando sucks. So, well, you know, it's kind it's, of just one of those deals. And it's a matter of it's – it's also, again, it's a matter of who's out. Yeah. Uh, Porter's out. Ennis is out. Michael Carter-Williams is out. Terrence Ross is out. Yeah. Have, good, have a good time. That's, mm. that, sounds like, that sounds like a blast for the Magic. Yeah. Now, in terms of the rest of the card, I mean, the Knicks are always tempting because they've been very good. Charlotte has actually kind of stayed – I don't want to say stayed afloat with all the injuries, but they've looked more respectable than I thought they were going to. Uh, there's no total in that game. I really like the under, but I don't know what that total is going to be. They played once in the regular season already. Game flew under, like most Knicks games do. I know the Knicks have played some higher scoring games lately, uh, but you played against good offenses. That game against New Orleans that went to overtime, that would have went under uh, if it didn't go to overtime. And yeah, Charlotte, that you look. Two, that was 206 for overtime. Yeah. And you look at Charlotte, and that team with this current lineup cannot really score. Now, I know LaMelo might be back next week which is very good news for them because they're going to need him if they want to get out of the play-in games or stuff like that. But as of right now, Ball's not walking through that door, or he is, but he's going to be wearing sweatpants. So I have to like the under because I think Charlotte's offense should have a serious problem in this game. Yeah, this is a Charlotte team that's averaged just over 103 points over their last 10 games. They've they've, uh, failed to score 104 of those 10. Mm. And they've scored over 113 just twice in that. But the defense is actually not awful. No, the defense has been playing decent. Uh, they gave up a, t- a ton to Brooklyn. But other than that, the defense has been playing okay. So, you know, it's always going to be a, you know, a monkey knife fight in the alley with, with when you get New York involved. But I just don't see – I just don't see enough on the Charlotte side of the ball to keep up with the Knicks. I think the Knicks defense shuts them down again. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've got Charlotte on like 95. I was going to say, I don't, I don't think Charlotte's reaching 100 in this game. No. no. I, I don't know what the total will be, though. It'll probably be either low two, 210s two, or high 200s. I was going to say 208. Yeah. I still have to like the under. You have to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yep. All right, my friend. Well, as always, if you guys are looking for any more information on these games or any others, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandwiners.com. Check out Scott and I's individual videos. We do those each and every day. Make sure you get subscribed to our channel. Make sure that way you get notified whenever we put them up. And, of course, like our videos. We're, does it, does it always sound needy when we say that, Scott? Uh, you always say it. So I don't sound needy at all. We, do you, when you do your videos, do you tell people to like your videos? No. No. Oh. I, I, I could. I'm sure you'd want me to, but uh, or the company would want me to, but I usually just wish people good luck and see you later. Yeah, like our videos, like like this video, and if you get a chance, if you watch Scott's video, like his video too. All right. If if I ever say that in the future, I, I'm going to send everybody uh, your way for the hate mail. Oh, that's fine. I, okay. I, got, I got big shoulders. Cool. I can take it. So, well, the, then again, I usually forget because I'm so busy trying to find all the obscure college basketball games during the year. So I'm already on your nerves. I figured I wouldn't bother. <laughs> and on that note, everybody, yeah. hey, you make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to be doing our. Uh, today in sports betting major league baseball coming right around the corner make sure you check that out and of course we wish you guys nothing but the best of luck today hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time on today in sports betting take care everybody